Hi there, my name's Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be me looking at my first quarterly stats for reading from my Storygraph. I don't use Goodreads, I use Storygraph instead because they give you so much information based on how you track your reading. You could track it in different ways. And I love all the charts and statistics it gives you. One of my favourite things to do with my sister at the end of the year when I'm up for Christmas is go through both our story graphs together and see how vastly different our reading tastes are. <laughs> now the first quarter of the year is obviously January, February, March so I'm doing this video a little bit late because we're now in we're in the middle of May now but honestly I hadn't thought of doing this until I saw Sid's video which I'll link below it was really good and it made me want to do my own and look at my own stats. So we're gonna do that. Let's start off by looking at what moods slash pacing the sort of books that I read from January to March were. So in total, over the course of the three months, my top moods were funny, emotional, dark, light-hearted, adventurous, mysterious, tense, sad, reflective, and inspiring. It's quite the range. And then my pacing was mostly medium paced books at 73%, fast at 15% and then slow at 12%. It's quite interesting that like basically half of the chart is split between funny, emotional, dark and lighthearted, They're, which are like <laughs> quite opposite ends of the spectrum. So I think I've clearly been like flitting back and forth between wanting to read really silly light-hearted things and then quite dark things. I also got my stats for 2023 to compare and in 2023 my top four moods were emotional, dark, mysterious and tense. So we've kept emotional and dark going strong but <laughs> I'm being a little bit happier in my reading so far in 2024 which is a good thing. There's a nicer balance there rather than 2023 where the majority of the things I read were sad. If we break it down even further we can see that in January I mostly read light-hearted, funny and emotional. In February it was adventure, dark, mysterious and then in March it was dark, sad, mysterious. So I think maybe maybe January I was trying to like, do you know what? I think January I was trying to get out of the January blues and I also did my Ali Hazelwood video in January. So that explains why I swayed way more towards lighthearted there. And then I started slipping clearly. March is when I think I started getting really heavy into thrillers. So that explains that decline into darkness. Then we can look at, oh God, right. <laughs> Next up is how much fiction compared to non-fiction I've read and we don't have to linger on this. I have read 100% fiction books so far compared to in 2023, 99% <laughs> fiction, 1% non-fiction. She has a type. I don't read enough non-fiction clearly. Um, maybe I should be aiming to kind of beat my last year. So if I can at least try and get 2% non-fiction, maybe that would be good. I've just not been in the mood for it. I don't really lean towards non-fiction and if I'm gonna read a non-fiction, it's probably gonna be like an autobiography. This is definitely something to consider though, if I should be reading more non-fiction or if it doesn't matter. But I should at least, I think, try to get over 1% so I can do better than 2023. And I'm not succeeding so far. I can't believe I've not read one non-fiction book this year. That's mental. Um, okay, then we go into genres. If we look at my overall for January, February, March, we've got contemporary and romance joint lead with 11 books and then LGBTQIA plus with nine books, fantasy with eight books, literary with six books, then it's young adult mystery historical all with three books. That's Actually, this is quite surprising. I would have thought mystery and thriller would be higher because it's saying I've only read three mystery books and two thriller books, but I definitely... Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I'm getting confused because I'm filming this later than I should have. So I'm taking into consideration April books and that doesn't count. Yeah, so maybe that, maybe that is right. You know, I, I'm going to trust Oigraph. I think thriller is going to be higher when we get to our mid-year statistics. 
but so far romance contemporary is way on top that makes sense as i said ali hazelwood i did all of her books if we compare this to 2023 <laughs> Not a lot has changed. We've still got romance, fantasy, contemporary, LGBTQIA+, near the top, and then we've got more thrillers and mysteries. Obviously this is for 2023 as a whole though. But yeah, my tastes are still the same in terms of the beginning of 2024 compared to last year. I do think it's interesting that historical is quite high for last year. It's like just under 10 and I don't love historical books. I've only read three historical books so far this year which I guess is actually considering I'm saying I don't like it is quite a lot. That's like a big a month. If we look at January romance comes out on top as well with seven books that was Ali Hazelwood month. Then February fantasy comes out on top and romance is low with only two. Fantasy is six. <laughs> That's so interesting. What was I reading in February? Oh, I read Emily Wilde's second book. I read A Story Spun on Scarlet. I suppose Stone Sky and Obelisk Gate do count as fantasy. I would say more sci-fi though. And then in March, oh, in March, I read The Most Literary. That's so interesting. So my romance, my romance is still like two. My romance is on top purely because of January, I think, because I only read two romances in both February and March. That's really interesting. What was I reading in March? <laughs> oh, Eliza Clark. Okay. A Little Life. Okay. My Tender ma Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Sorry if you can hear Sienna. <laughs> she has an itch. Okay. Let's look at my format. So I'm not going to compare this to my 2023 stats because I only just this year started properly adding books to my story graph as in like which edition I'm using if it's digital, audio or physical. I wasn't doing that before so my statistics for 2023 will be completely skewed for that. I actually realised when I was looking up some stats that <laughs> it says that some books I've read in a completely different language. I am not bilingual, I only speak English, but it's saying that I've read like books in Dutch and French and stuff and that is not the case but it's obviously because I've added in the wrong edition of the book. So I've been better at doing that this year. If I've not completely added the right edition, I've made sure I've at least added the right format of book. So in total for January, February, March, I've read 58% print books and 42% digital books. So no audiobooks, which is interesting and not, not too shocking because I find audiobooks actually a bit difficult to listen to. I need to listen to specific types of audiobooks to be able to concentrate. I love a podcast. I find it very easy to focus on people having a conversation if it's like something that's interesting to me. But even so, when I'm listening to a podcast, I will find myself kind of like blacking out at points. Um, if I'm doing something else and just getting lost in my head and then coming back and they'll be talking about something I have no idea how they got there. That's what happens to me in audiobooks too but with audiobooks it's more difficult to black out and come back in and expect to know where you are in the plot compared to listening to podcasts and kind of catching up with the conversation based on context. So that's why I don't listen to many audiobooks. I do like listening to autobiographies on audio especially if they're narrated by the person who wrote the book. Like I like listening to celebrity audiobooks like that. So maybe that's how I get my audiobooks and my non-fiction up. Maybe I should look into reading something like that. That being said, I have gotten into recently, I really like ASMR but my husband hates ASMR, he can't listen to it, it makes his skin crawl so I have to wear big headphones at night if I want to listen to it. I don't love doing that so I've been trying to not watch ASMR at night to go to sleep and I've been putting on audiobooks on YouTube instead that are kind of ASMR because the people reading them are so like soft-spoken in a nice way and I can get away with playing that out loud because Alex doesn't mind that and I found a really cool guy who does audiobooks I think he's a Patreon which I don't understand like the rules around how can you get away with like reading other people's works through a Patreon where you're getting paid surely, surely that's like a grey area because you're still you're getting paid by using someone else's work. I don't know, but anyway, this guy is really good and he uploads some of his readings to 
YouTube. So I think there's like a Twilight one and I think there's there's quite a few different ones. But the one I love listening to now is his version of Coraline. I've never read Coraline. I think we maybe were assigned to read it in uni and I watched the film inst <laughs> instead. But um, he's got such a lovely voice. And then there's rain sounds in the background too. And obviously Neil Gaiman is such a great writer and he's got that kind of fairy tale feel that's a very nice book to fall asleep to. I'll link it below as well if you are interested in that. It's funny though because that's the only time I'm reading it. I've never read it. <laughs> it's quite strange because I'm only hearing snippets of the book so I feel like I have read Coraline now but only in like fits and bursts and uh, not in the right order. I also woke up a few times and and the audiobook was still playing but it was during like a scary part and it was quite um it was soothing but it was also a very creepy thing to wake up in the middle of the night to. So yeah I have read more print than digital but it's interesting because I've read in January more print than digital by a long while then in February it was 50 50 exactly and then in March I read more digital than print. And you know, I think that is actually because I think it was March that I signed up for NetGalley so I could read books that weren't released yet quicker and I have to read them digital. So I think that that does make sense why I was reading more digital in March. Then we get into star ratings. So my overall star rating of all time is 3.72, which is all right. That's all right. I would want it to be a little bit higher probably but I think I think that is actually quite solid and then shall we look at 2023 what it was eek in 2023 my average rating was 3.33 which I definitely would want it to be higher than that I think being higher than 3.5 I would say is like okay I think that's you're doing okay but Mm, lower than 3.5 that's a bit disappointing so am i winning my total average rating for january february march is 3.7 so not quite as good as my like all time but much better than last year's so i'm gonna take that that's fine january was 3.64 february was 3.25 and oh March was 4.17 March was actually a really good reading month because that was when I gave my first five star rating this year and I gave it twice actually to both of Eliza Clark's books and I also read A Little Life and I know that it's a controversial book but I did really like it and I gave that 4.5 so that was a really solid month Okay, I'm happy with how that's going. And then what are my most read authors? We have Ali Hazelwood, read six of her books, Heather Fawcett, two of her books, Lila Sage, two, N.K. Jemison, two, and Eliza Clark, two. Ali Hazelwood's the only kind of author spotlight I've done for a video, but I do want to do more of those types of videos. I've said in a couple other videos, I want to really want to read the Shatter Me series. There's a few other YA series that I missed growing up because got into a reading slump or whatever that I think would be fun to go back and revisit. It'll be interesting like halfway through the year and maybe more towards the end to see who comes out on top because I do really want to do more focused videos on one particular author. I also want to go through my collections, see like how many authors I would say are my favourite authors, really think it through. I can't remember who it was. I was watching who was like, you can't say they're your favourite author unless you've rated at least three of their books five stars. That has gotten into my head so I want to pick out my favourite authors, see if that rule applies and if not then I need to read more of their books. I want to read more of their books anyway but that's gonna be, that could be maybe a fun video too actually if I read other books by authors whose books I've loved. So like for example Mona Awad, her book Rouge was my second favourite book of last year. I loved it so so much and I've read Bunny by her but I know that she's written other books that sound really really good. Piranesi, right now I'd say Piranesi is probably my favourite book of all time if I can be so bold to say that but that's the only book I've read of her so I need to get on what's it called? Doctor Strange and Mr Norell. That's a big boy though so I'm intimidated by that but the last time I was intimidated by a big boy I gave it 4.5 so uh, I didn't mean to say that like that um, moving on. So my reading goal this year is 
I want to read 50 books and as of the 31st of March I read 26 books and 9,910 pages so we're over halfway there at that point. I think 50 books is going to be achievable and I'm actually filming this in the middle of May as I said. I'm now further along. I'm quite close to achieving that which is great. I probably could have set the reading goal higher but any higher than 50 I think is putting too much pressure on someone. You never know what's going to happen in your life and like I d don't want to take the joy out of reading and make it about like how much I'm reading. I can already feel myself sometimes teetering into that because I feel like with booktube and bookstagram and, and books being quite like trendy, reading is quite a trendy thing to do which is great. I love that but it's also a lot of pressure now and I think sometimes can come too much of a competition and then that sucks the joy out of it when really it is a hobby and you should be going at your own pace. So I think every year I just I'm gonna set it at 50 books, know that that is something that I can achieve without being overwhelmed and then it's always nice because if you do go over your goal that you know is achievable for yourself then it's just like yay I did better than I thought I was going to and that's always a nice thing and then the other challenge that I'm doing this year is the Storygraph Reads the World challenge which is basically they've got 10 countries that they've picked and you have to read a book from each of these countries so they have to be written by an author from this country and the book should be predominantly set in that country as well. As of January, February, March I've only read one book. I read My Tender Matador which was for the chili prompt and I really really liked that book. So only 10% through that challenge but got to the end of the year so I'm not too concerned. My kind of goal is to be reading one book for that challenge a month which I've already failed at actually but that's okay. We move on. Let's just quickly see how many books I read in 2023. Uh, so I set my reading goal in 2023 to be 40 books and I read 74 books. So I think I'm on my way to actually reading more this year than I did last year which is fun. And now's the fun part. I have picked my top five books that I read so far in January, February and March. I will preface this by doing an honourable mention for Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies which very nearly was in place of one of the books on this list but at the end of the day didn't quite cut it purely because I just wanted more romance in it. <laughs> I wanted there to be more romance so that's why but I did love that book and it was very close to being the top five. But my top five in no particular order, Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood which was my favourite Ali Hazelwood book. I loved it so much. Having had a few months to kind of sit on Ali Hazelwood and like just thinking back on all the plots I can safely say that. I really enjoyed Love Theoretically too but that was quite sad. I found that book quite sad. I almost cried at one point in that book which doesn't often happen to me and that's good for when you want that sort of mood but I think Love on the Brain was just a really fun sweet time and what I love in a romance. Then dramatic turn of events. Eliza Clark has got two spots on this list. Boy Parts and Penance which I both read back to back first two five star reads of this year for me and both have made it into my top five books of January, February, March, my first quarter. I love them so much. They're written in quite different styles which I always find impressive from an author. I think RF Quang is another person who switches up the type of style that they write in and type of genre as well and I really really appreciate that in an author. I love it and both Boy Parts and Penance for me were just so addictive. I read them both in the span of like one weekend which I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing because they're both quite dark. Boy Parts is kind of satirical and is funny as well but like quite dark humour. It kind of actually has the tone of Baby Reindeer. If you've watched that on Netflix re recently I think tonally they were quite similar and Penance is more true crime style of writing but both the plots of these books were so gripping and so engaging but also were commenting on things within society that really intrigue me in terms of like our relationship with true crime and also Eliza Clark is really good at writing characters whose perspective you're in but you don't quite know if you can trust so like unreliable narrators that's it that's the phrase oftentimes unlikable characters who you're stuck with and I really 
like that. I think it's a real strength an author does that because I think it's much easier to write a character that a reader is gonna like enough to stick with the story but it's much harder to write a character that the reader is kind of repelled by but still wants to stay with them because they're drawn into who they are and their darkness and everything. The other book that made this list was Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage which I think is my favourite romance that I've read this year, definitely. I loved it so much. It's cowboy romance, black cat, golden retriever, relationship vibe, small town romance, really good spice in it, amazing lead characters. I love the hero and heroine so much. It is definitely one of the best romances I've ever read, personally. I loved it. My The only cowboy romance I've read, or that's not true, I've read Done and Dusted as well, but that's the only cowboy romance series I've read. I can't wait to read more Lila Sage. I just really loved that book. And then finally, The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. It was either between this or The Obelisk Gate, which is the second book in the series. Stone Sky is the third book. Book. I thought that The Stone Sky was my least favourite book in the trilogy but the more I've sat on it the more I've realised that that's the book that I actually think about the most and I think has affected me the most. It's the book that I would most want to reread because there is a certain perspective and narrative throughout the third book in which you learn kind of the history of the world that you're in and how it came to be and I loved those bits so much and those are the bits that have really stuck with me. I want to read more N.K. Jemisin actually. I think she's great. Her writing style for like sci-fi fantasy is so unique for the genre in terms of what I've read. I wouldn't say I'm as well read in most genres to be honest because I flip back and forth between different genres but from what I read of sci-fi fantasy her writing style is so different to any I've personally interacted with and I loved it so much and I loved her world and I loved her character characters. Just the more that I reflect on the Broken Earth trilogy as a whole, and I mean I loved it, I banged on about how much I loved it last year or earlier this year, but even now the more I think on it it's just like my appreciation for it continues to grow. So yeah, I know this was a, a late video in terms of doing quarterly stats but I just really wanted to do it after I saw Sid's video so I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what your favourite book of the year has been so far, how you're getting on with any of your goals or if you're just reading for fun and trying not to put too much pressure on it. And also if you're if you use Storygraph 2 and you're doing any particular challenges on Storygraph that you think are really fun, let me know because I definitely want to do more in the future. I'm really enjoying doing the Reads the World challenge. It's kind of pushing me out of my comfort zone a lot and I'm discovering lots of really good books through doing it. So let me know and I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!